Welcome to Last First Date Radio, featuring interviews with experts in dating, relating, and mating in midlife. And now, here's your host, Sandy Weiner. This is episode number 464 with Guy Blaise, How to Love Like the French. Hi, everybody. I'm Sandy Weiner, and welcome back to Last First Date Radio, where we believe it is never too late to go on your last first date. And to help support your journey to a great life and lasting love, I wrote a fabulous book, and it's called Becoming a Woman of Value, How to Thrive in Life and Love. It is filled with 30 tips, stories, and exercises, and it's designed to help you step more fully into your value, and you can find it on Amazon. This week's tip on becoming a woman of value from the book is step number 25, which is know when to say yes. We tend to say no all the time, like, no, 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 I don't want to do this. And especially when it comes to love, we need to take more risks. So it's important to know when to say yes to opportunities, to emotional growth, to just having fun, instead of just putting the kibosh on everything. I have a feeling that Guy's going to talk about that a little bit today, too. Um, mm -hmm. So before I bring him on, I just wanted to give a shout out to my Facebook group. It's called Your Last First Date, and it is a fabulous place for women over 40 who want to really have a positive place of support for dating and relationships. This is a, a, a large group, but it's heavily monitored with these amazing monitors. And so we don't spend time complaining. We spend time growing. And if that's of interest to you, please join us at your last mm -hmm. first date. Mm -hmm. And um, now for my guest, uh, Guy Blaise. And he is the author of a new book, Love Like the French, A Guide to Better Romance and Relationships. He's going to talk about everything from Tinder to speed dating to why people find themselves in lackluster relationships. He's an author. He's from France. And he's going to give us the French point of view on dating and love, especially <laughs> for men, right, Guy? Oui, but merci. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a great honor uh, to be in your show. Uh, thank yes. you. We're talking about uh, relationship. Uh, um, I wrote this book uh, based on the observation. Uh, I left uh, Paris to North Carolina because I uh, work in the biotech. But, so I'm uh, focused on uh, a lot of uh, medicine uh, making, uh, but I start observing the American interaction relationship. It just clicked in my head to say, well, I need to jump in the American uh, pool of relationship and have an opinion about it. So I wrote this book uh, uh, from observations uh, and letters from American women. Ah, cool. But, yeah. So yeah, the French are known for their uh, ooh -la -la. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> And Americans sometimes are a little bit more uptight, like they overthink everything, right? So what are some of the biggest differences you've seen between how the French love and how the Americans love? Well, the first thing, uh, once you look at uh, how the people get together as a couple, how the respect between couples, um, especially when you look at the people who have been uh, married uh, and divorced at 50 or after 45, there is the first thing you get is suspicion. People don't trust each other very much, and people don't take risk. I met a woman who would say, I will never get married again. At 50, it can be a renaissance. <laughs> you can start over and find the right match. Sometimes the first choice you made was the bad choice or the wrong choice. It's like the door and the key. If you don't fit, the door won't open. So. It's, there's always hope at any age. Yeah. yeah. So I observe and uh, talk to men, and they have their own opinion about relationship. But in France, actually, we are more open when it comes to discuss of any topic. But here it's like, OK, sometimes you look at it like, oh, America is not a theocracy. So people have to be free to talk about any topics in the relationship. Yeah. Here, people are more conservative when they come to speaking up and expressing themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, I mean, people have gotten more open here. We, we have taken a lot of taboo topics and put them on the table. But yeah. I think people still, you know, the suspicion is something I find interesting because I think people do tend to take one experience like a divorce yeah. and say, mm -hmm. all people are not trustworthy. Like my husband said that about me when we got divorced. He said he doesn't want to get remarried, even though he's been with a girlfriend for about 10 years. He oh. said, I'm not going to get remarried because all women say they love you then they don't love you anymore and they take your money <laughs> that's his okay, that's his well, conclusion <laughs> exactly so that's become a suspicion so you're yes. putting your life on hold mm -hmm. uh, just because you think uh, but we cannot say all women are equal or, you know like all men are equal that's not true i mean everybody is different but as long as suspicion will be in your life everything is be about or maybe she's with me because she wants something for me or because it, no, you sacrifice your life. Uh, it's a big sacrifice. Yeah. We never know. Sometimes we have to take a little dose of a risk to progress. Absolutely. Yeah. Say yeah. yes to risk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I agree with you. I mean, I, <laughs> I, you know, I often tell people who are afraid to take risks that when I got divorced, I had no idea what was on the other side. I didn't know. I didn't have a boyfriend. I didn't have a job. I didn't have anything planned. But I knew that I had to leave and I had to pave the way for a new life. I didn't know what it looked like yet. And a lot of times we just need to get out there and do that. because yes. That's how we learn. Exactly. Uh, we have a saying in French uh, saying, qui ne risque rien n'a rien. If you don't try, you will never get. Mm hmm that should be just a way to, to take life sometimes in anything, yeah. relationship, business, anything. Yeah. We have to take some risk to, to, to be successful. I totally agree. And Yoda from uh, Star Wars says, there is no try, only do. <laughs> so you gotta voilà. yeah, do. That's, that's it. <laughs> Get out there. <clears throat> And so, Guy, you talked to me a few minutes before we, we started recording that you had gone back to France recently to visit your grandmother. And I yeah. know you write in your book about your grandmother, and she taught you some important lessons about love and dating. So can you share yeah. some of those tips? Yeah, so my grandmother, her name is Elizabeth. Uh, she's uh, 90, 93 years old. Uh, she's right now in Montpellier, so in south of France, uh, close to the Marseille and so um, I was the first uh, grandson of uh, Elizabeth. Uh, so I got this uh, great honor to be often in her kitchen. And uh, so she had my aunt, so who are now women, uh, married, uh, some of them divorced. But there was something that she taught me about respecting a woman um, that I learned at an early age. And also the advice that she used to give uh, to her own daughters. Um, about dating. Uh, she knew that, uh, for example, one lesson I remember still resonating in my ear. Um, when um, uh, a woman loves a man more than he loves her, she's in trouble. <laughs> well, that makes a lot of sense too, that we have to find a good balance. When you love too much, can be also too bad. So, that a lesson. So every time she speaks, always in parables to teach a lesson. So I grew up with those values uh, about dating and be careful and how you can uh, trust a man or how to trust just a woman. Yeah, that a lesson that resonated in my ear. <laughs> mm. So that, you know, that one gets talked about a lot, especially in my group, my Facebook group. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of women believe that they should be loved more than they love him. And I think it should be equal. What do you, what do you have to say about that? Well, I, well, well, first of all, according to my grandmother, those who are loved, the women who are loved more, are more in a stable marriage mm. uh, because the husband kind of value them. But when it comes to recognizing, you know, Usually, quality men recognize quality women, vice versa. You know, it's, it's just like, if I value you, 
some women also will recognize that I'm in a good, good hand. So yeah, we can try to be equal, but it's hard to be equal in, in a way of loving. There's always some extra loves in one side. That's what I think. But it doesn't hurt if you, you are loved more. You just need to know that the love that you're getting, you need to appreciate. Mm. You feel lucky to be loved more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, appreciate the love you have and the love yeah. you get. And you learn to say thank you. Uh, merci. Always. Oh. Uh, it's important. Is that another of your mother's uh, wor grandmother's words of wisdom? Yes. So, for example, uh, she talks a lot about, uh, well, I'm going to share uh, some of my uh, own sisters uh, married uh, with a man. So she used to use sex as a, a way to punish her husband. Mm -hmm. uh, so the husband, so he's my brother-in-law. Um, we called my grandmother to complain that if we have any differences in our marriage, she shut down uh, and she does not want to have sex anymore. Of course, I remember my grandmother telling her that, you know, that's the wrong way to, to solve your problem. You can use, well, I'm going to use the word cookie, yeah, pussy uh, in French, uh, cookie kind of. Don't use the cookie uh, as a, you know, way of getting your way. Mm -hmm. So I learned it too. And that both ways, yeah, men can also retract and say no sex, but that's not a good attitude to always bring sex in the middle of problems that you have to solve people need to talk yeah that's yeah. a lesson I learned from. such an important one and I when I first got married I used to sit around the table with my sister-in-law and her friends and they all talked about withholding sex as a way to try to teach a lesson to punish and I was like what are you doing this is not yeah. going to help uh, this is no definitely not the way to no, go no yeah. But people yeah. don't know how to work out their differences. That's one yeah. of the problems, right? Exactly. So yeah, sex uh, is a, a way to, to rebond to once you're on the same page, mm -hmm. physically and emotionally together. Sex is great. Yeah. But to finish because uh, you got a power over the other person, just no, no good. <laughs> right. So work out your stuff and then use sex to bond and not to punish. Yeah, exactly. And I seen like in my in the case of my uh, sister, uh, talk um, she allowed me to talk, but I'm going to say <laughs> it anyway. Um, I think the relationship was stronger based on sex too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I caught them uh, many times uh, arguing about it, but the sex was very important to them. And yeah, if that worked. Everything is good. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, we'll talk about the French way of doing having sex in a few minutes, but um, <laughs> let's let's get into some other of your grandmother's pieces of wisdom. So you you mentioned appreciation. So she talked about appreciating each other. Yes, it's very important that to say thank you uh, for any gesture that uh, you do, and also what I learned personally uh, as a son, a grandson, um, that when you do something for your woman, don't, don't wait for a parade that they have to applaud you. You do it with your heart. Mm -hmm. Don't expect to say, oh, well, you are the greatest man. Do it with your heart. If you recognize it, fine, but do it with the good intentions. And don't expect to be rewarded. Or for example, that, okay, if I'm good, or I'm good only when I need sex. So we do everything you like so that I can have sex. No, you love with your heart, not with your, your penis or whatever. So you <laughs> have to show the affection. Yeah. 365 days a year. <laughs> no holiday for love. Yeah, that's a good one. So <laughs> often people do things expecting so it's we call it give to get right we give yeah. to get something so when yeah. you give from your heart and it's hard for people because often you can start out with good intentions like i i did something nice for you but you didn't appreciate it and you didn't ever acknowledge it so what happens if you 
you're not doing it just for the reward, but what happens if your partner doesn't appreciate? We just talked about how important appreciation is. So if they well, do that over and over, what do you do? Well, well for example, uh, being here, French, uh, living in America, uh, I, I went to a few dates with a woman. Oh, in, my, in my mind, I don't expect, I'll give you one anecdote of my own experience. I took two colleagues of mine, two women, uh, to lunch, and I pay for the lunch for both. Well, I came back to work. One of my male colleagues told me, oh, so who you likes? Who you want to sleep with? Well, it's not a trading for food, for <laughs> sex, you know? So here is like a, after two dates, a male expect to have sex, which I find very absurd. Uh, uh, it, sex is about feelings. It's not about being rewarded for for food or how good I am. Sometimes I learn one thing from my grandmother. Um, it's like seeding. You 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 plant something. You don't expect that a plant will grow the same day. It's about love. Is about the same. You you seed and you water it. You take care of it. Eventually you get a reward. You get beautiful tree grow and fruits. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, it's, there's a lot of like transactional ways of looking at sex and especially in the whole, I know that's true in America. I don't know if it's true in France as well, but a lot of times people go out on one, two dates and they expect something in return. And it's, I think a lot of women want to pay for their own meals because they don't want it to feel like if I let him pay for my meal, then I have to have sex with him. It's like a transaction. Yeah, that's exactly what really I found very strange. And I went to date yeah. with the people who were thinking, okay, after three dates, he's going to ask for sex. And I said, no, no, you, you, you have to be mentally ready for it. It's not, or you just go jump from woman to woman just because, uh, you know, that's not right. That's not, I don't agree with it. Yeah. 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 I don't either. I mean, but I, I, I love the analogy of planting seeds because it's a, it's, it grows, you know, there's a slow build instead of this instant, it has to happen immediately and you feel it when the person walks in the room. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, you plant an apple tree uh, to Monday, you cannot harvest the, the apple on Monday <laughs> evening. No. Or Wednesday. <laughs> or Wednesday. It's too soon. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> Especially for someone who's looking for a long-term relationship, you, you have to know it's like a marathon. It's you know a sprinter. You just go slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you get rewarded. Let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Amazon Music Unlimited. You can listen to over seventy million songs and thousands of playlists and stations. Plus, you can now stream your favorite podcasts like Last First Date Radio. You can listen to any song, anytime, anywhere, on any of your devices, your smartphone, your tablet, your PC or Mac, Fire TV, and any Alexa-enabled devices like the Amazon Echo. Get Amazon Music Unlimited for free for 30 days. Just head on over to getamazonmusic.com forward slash last first date to learn more and claim this offer. Yeah, so what would you say to someone, like a woman who wants to slow a man down because she wants to get to know him better? And a lot of men would just say, forget it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go walk away and find somebody who wants sex today. But let's say he really is a guy who's looking for a relationship. What's a good thing for her to say to him? Well, first of all, that's the best way to weed out the man, you, you can read the intention of a man. If he's really interested, he will be there. He will not run away after. That's yeah. the best way to just take your time. And usually after three dates, if he didn't get sex, what he does, he run away. He go look somewhere else. But that's the only way you can speak up, be firm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the way you, you, you know the intention of a man. So just say it. Just tell say him. It. Tell him you're interested in getting to know him, but you want to take your time and a good 
guy who's interested in that is going to say, fine, great. And the other guy is going to say, okay, bye. I'll find somebody who wants to have sex today. Yeah. Like we say in French, you don't need to wear gloves to say it. Just say it. Yeah. And life will continue. <laughs> we wear a lot of gloves here in America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And necessary. Yeah. yeah you people... have to liberate yourself. Right. Well, Circular well, yeah, talking all over the place. And you don't get to the point and then nobody knows what you really meant because you didn't say it directly. Yeah. Right. Um, so let's let's talk about sex. We touched mm-hmm. on it before, and um, mm-hmm. you talk about that American women put up with lackluster sex lives. Like they settle, they put up with lackluster sex lives. They mm-hmm. punish. They do all kinds of things. So why do you think that they do? Why do Why do you think they just put up with these meh sex? <laughs> well, I the first impression I have. Uh, as a Frenchman living here, actually, it's like a marriage is like a business transaction. Mm-hmm. And I just noticed some women who married because of the status. And sometimes from the beginning, the sex was bad. But they married anyway. But hoping somehow God is going to make a miracle. Sex is going to be great. But sometimes uh, the first year, the sex go down. I don't find it. I, I don't understand it myself. Um, it's important that, uh, but in France, for example, uh, I would talk about men or women. Sex is one of the reasons you marry too. You can talk about the fairness, but compatibility of sex, sexuality is important as, as important than money. You can't just go put yourself in a marriage knowing that sexually you are not satisfied. It's a suicide. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I think some people, it's really a mix here in America, but I think a lot of people, like we were just talking about how things build slowly over time. So if people do believe that sex is not great, but it'll build slowly over time, but it doesn't, you know, sometimes maybe it does. I don't know. You know, yeah, you uh, that, I guess if it doesn't fire your husband. You know, some days I think about American women and I say, okay, I wish I can send you all to France, even for one month, <laughs> and come back to America. I guarantee you, 90% of you will fire your husband. <laughs> uh, because of the things that you put up, you, you accept it, but that's not okay. You, you, it's both ways, yes, I agree, but don't go into marriage when you're not sexually satisfied. You have to be more demanding. If it's not good, don't, don't wear gloves to say it. Don't be afraid to say it. Teach him if you will. Just say it. Yeah. So people in France are very direct? They just Oh, very direct. Uh, yeah. No, if you're a bad uh, or a bad uh, lover, uh, she's going to tell you. You need to improve. Okay. And you have to use your imagination. Very important. Um, I know a few friends, um, including myself. I spend my time watching women show. If I was hooked to your Facebook group, I'll be listening. There are great tips for men there. Mm-hmm. But if you are blind, you cannot drive a car. So listen to women. What they want, what they're saying, and you improve yourself and you will be a better lover. So true. There's no such a thing a woman show. It's for everybody. Yeah. I mean, I think in all in all ways, most people who are direct communicators, like I'm pretty direct. Yeah. And I told my husband many times what I needed to make the relationship better. Very mm-hmm. clear. And then we went to therapy, very clear. Mm-hmm. And he couldn't do it. Now he's different. Now he's he's made a lot of changes on himself. But I think it happens very often in relationships when one person is so blocked or wounded or shut down, it's hard for them to take it in because it's it's it hurts their ego, right? It hurts mm-hmm. if somebody said to a man, you know, you're not so good at sex or I'm not enjoying this, a lot of men would just shut down and feel terrible about themselves. So how do you yeah, that's, that's the wrong attitude. I agree with that, but a lot of people don't have such a great attitude like you. So it's, it's a so positive, to... actually, pro- positive criticism. 
I, I mean, if 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 you're going right, uh, the, your wife say go left. Hey, it doesn't cost you no energy to go left. Yeah, just simple. Yeah, serious. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna improve your relationship. And she's saying it because she wants to get closer. She wants to be more intimate, and you can't take it in because you see it as you're hurting me instead of what can I do to help us. Yeah. And yeah. so when women go silent, sometimes, I mean, for we, we talk as men uh, in France, we always say that when a woman goes silent, worry, uh, she may be holding. Mm -hmm. And then don't be afraid to ask, what can I do? How can I do better? That does not make us less men. Yeah. We, we still have our masculinity, uh, but we, we can talk. We can show also emotion. That does not make us weak at all. No. That's the difference between us and the British. So I'm just picking at them. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think it's a hard thing for men to balance the masculinity and their emotions. Because for so many years, decades, hundreds of hundreds of years, men were told it's weak to show emotion and women today are saying i want you to show emotion but if you show me too much emotion then i'll lose all respect for you because then you'll be weak so it's like how do you find that balance between some emotion and too much like you know like one woman in my group once described how a man was on a first date and he felt so comfortable with her he started to cry and oh. tell her about right so you know, so all the women were like, oh, my God, I would never date that man again. Now, that to me was too much. It was it was right. So how do you feel like if a man, you know, just starts opening up and he's crying and right. So what would what would you say to that? Well, there, there are limits. I mean, it's 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 not OK to cry just for, you know, first date or after a date. That's already giving you a sign that you go, a woman is going to be your mother. That's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. You have to be a man. And a man mean, does not mean that when you're in pain, you have to hide your pain. Just express yourself without crying. Mm -hmm. It's okay. But crying, if no, that's definitely, it's a faux pas. It's uh, unacceptable. To, yeah. uh, she can already project the future with that kind of man. Yeah. That is and... going to be the one who's getting, giving him Kleenex. Yeah. And taking care of him like his mom. Yeah. Voila. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we want to be equals. We want to be like, I take care of you, you take care of me, we can both open up to each other. It's not weak. It's important because you do have to build this relationship, though, to get there. So you mm -hmm. talked before about the seeds. I think it's the same thing with emotion that mm -hmm. you don't you don't share your whole life story and all the hard stuff right away with somebody. You have to build right it, like the same exactly. kind of seed planting yeah and, and i also notice uh, something that among uh, americans here is that uh, women have a tendency to take care of men uh, usually when a man gets sick uh, i see it more just as an outsider just watching um a woman gets sick a man leave leave her um i find it also very bizarre uh, very absurd um <laughs> A man, a woman will put up with a lot, uh, take care, of baby, take care of the man who is sick and everything. Sometimes until they pass away, but the reverse. I mean, it's just like quick. She's sick. I'm out. Yeah. Oh, what kind of love is that? That's not fair. So egalitarian men actually will find a good balance in any situation. It's important to love equal. Yeah, I agree, and I think there's sort of an unspoken thing in america where a man gets sick and he acts like he's a two-year-old like i need you and i can't breathe and please and i'm so i can't do anything and a woman gets sick and she's still running the house and the kids and doing everything so i think we have to get those fixed ways of being out of our vocabulary i think the only way to change it is to say you know what we both can take care of ourselves and i'll be there for you right we can we can be there for each other but it doesn't not these extremes Right. It yeah, sounds like they're very, very about... important. Yeah, very important to find a good balance in a relationship. You cannot be just one street or one mm -hmm. way 
uh, way uh, because uh, I'm a man, uh, no, unacceptable. Yeah. yeah. I like this. Very good conversation. <laughs> uh, men have to listen to this because women already know this, but I think women have to stop catering to the men who act like a baby. Also, like we, we train people how to treat us. And so we can train yeah, voila. them differently. Yeah, very, right? very good one. Yeah, you train people how to treat you. And that, unfortunately, you have to be finding an inspiration too from others, like the French woman, the, uh, can inspire you or uh, the way they, they handle this situation. Um, definitely it's a good say, yeah, the way you, you treat is the way you, you, you train a man how to treat you. And that's uh, something that uh, a person, I think American men have a lot of things to, to work on, mm -hmm. to better themselves. We're trying, we're trying here. <laughs> yeah. um, so let's, you talk about also um, in your book that there are small ways you can improve your sex life outside of the bedroom. So yeah. can you share some of the ways that we can do that? Well, well in France, when we talk about sex, uh, sex doesn't start at night in the bed. If you know you you're going to have sex, start your day eight hours earlier, building up. Be nice, do everything that can release a stress to each other. Don't, don't have a, an argument at 7 p.m. By 9 p.m. you want to have sex. It's not going to work. So try by doing the great thing. Like I see here, I see the most flowers on Valentine's Day. But flowers grow the whole year. You find flowers every day. But, it's not necessary to bring flowers to your woman uh, every week, but time to time, vice versa. A woman can give us some surprise uh, just to you know, take her husband out for dinner uh, just because you have not eaten out for a month. So that's very important and that will help sex and the touching, uh, well, for us, uh, we touch a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Physical contact is very important. Or well, you go sit on a couch, well, come close to each other. Play with her hair. Mm -hmm. Watch a movie. And I guarantee sex will be fluid. Very important. Yeah. And I can tell you from a woman's point of view that often sex feels like a chore when none of these things are present because the arguments have still happened there's still stress nobody wants to talk but they want to connect through sex and yeah. women want to connect emotionally first to feel safe yeah. and so if you're doing all these little things to really treat each other kindly and create a sexual atmosphere sex will be more natural and being consistent yeah. It's not just some, something because of your need at the moment that you be nice. But you, you, a woman, even in France, you got a great memory. If you're being bad Monday, don't expect sex will be great on Thursday. It's just help yourself as a man. Try to create less conflict. And things will go well. Nice. <laughs> um, you also talk about people who have different libido, different levels of libido. So if a man and a woman don't have matched libidos, mm -hmm. what can a man do with a woman who has a different level of libido? Well, when I was writing uh, this book, actually, I, I called a doctor that uh, was a good friend of mine. She, I asked her how many times men ask for a Viagra knowing that they have a problem, usually uh, they don't say it. They're embarrassed to ask their own doctor that I have a problem, um, I need help. It doesn't hurt. I mean, the whole purpose of science is also to help people to improve. It is no shame to ask for it. I, I, I have a say, well, I say it anyway, there is no such a thing of, uh, uh, you know, a dead pussy or dead dick. Uh, there is always a solution. And that's the way communication come together to talk about the taboo that you mentioned, that 
uh, sometime here in America, people just say, no, avoid talk the topic and talk about other things, but oh, we will talk about it later. But it's a real problem. Sex is so important in a relationship that people can just go without it or it become friendship. Yeah. So you're talking about if there is a sexual issue like um, erectile dysfunction or if a woman has issues after menopause or she has some kind of other issue, um, which, and then, then we have people who have sexually transmitted diseases. They're afraid to talk about it. They're afraid to date even because they had, they're embarrassed by somebody gave them herpes, which didn't even, they didn't have anything to do with that except they didn't know. And so um, there's a lot of reasons to have very frank discussions with people, again, at the right time, not on the first date, um, very <clears throat> right? But, um, but we're talking about libido also, like, so somebody's sexual desire changes, mm -hmm. and especially as people get older, um, mm -hmm. hormones change and mm -hmm. sexual drive changes. And that's fine if you both have the same drive, but if yeah. one person really wants sex all the time and the other one doesn't, what do you do? Well, the first question, one person mm -hmm. is a rabbit, uh, like we said, French, uh, but you need to basically find what is good for both of you because sexuality is not just limited on penetration. Sexuality is also the touching. It's, it's romance, uh, going out, doing things just to make the condition, the atmosphere better. And I don't agree that things it have to be always in a traditional way. Uh, when a man wants sex and just climb on the top of a woman, even though she's not ready. Um, uh, like I can say to any man that I know that I think about the oven. Women are just like a oven. You have to preheat before you make the cookie or before you make a pizza. So if a man does not understand it, even after menopause, if it takes you one hour to warm up, be patient and listen to your woman. I mean, I personally, I will not be with a woman who is not ready to have sex with. It's, it's disturbing. It's just not her fault. Mm -hmm. But take a moment to say, okay, if it takes us 45 minutes to warm up, let's just go 45. Don't time yourself. Just... Take it easy. And things will eventually work out. When the mental is there, that's the most important. The physical is nothing. The mental is more important. Right. So what I hear you keep saying is good communication, really connect with each other, talk about this stuff, find out what turns each other on, and preheat the oven. I like the preheating. I think that's exactly. Preheat the oven. <laughs> you get a beep. It's time to put the pizza or the cookie in a oven. <laughs> but if a man does not understand it, then you need to go learn. Listen to women. It's important. That will make the French good lovers. We listen. We pay attention. We watch the show, what the women are talking about. You're a guy, but you like a piece of hair in the soup. Sit there and watch. Listen. They're going to give you some tips that will help you to be a better lover. I love it. All right. So let's change the topic a little bit for a final question. I want to talk a little bit about online dating. Um, you say that the French have, French have Tinder also. I've traveled. I remember I was in Israel and I went on Tinder in Israel and um, oh, okay. I went on Bumble. I went on a couple of different dating apps. And it's always interesting when you, when you go to a different country. Yeah. I found there was a big difference in Israel with the kind of communication. Men uh -huh. were much more willing to go on a date, to, to quickly get off text. Here, I find men, I have to always ask for a call. Like, how are you? Good. Okay, good. I mean, it's just like it goes nowhere. So I'm like, if there's any connection at all, 
I want to yeah. talk. And if we talk mm -hmm. and we connect, I want to meet. That's it. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't have patience for the whole bleh, go back and blah, forth. Blah, blah. And then you, yeah, you forget each other. So, so tell us a little bit, like, what's Tinder like in, in France? And um, what tips do you have for people who want to improve their online dating success, especially men, because you, you really talk to men? Uh, Tinder is very popular in France. Huh? You swap left or right, uh, you meet somebody, and you know exactly what they want. We know all Tinder is for a hookup. Right? So there is no ambiguity when two people meet. Well, what tip I can give, especially to men, is to be who you are. Be honest. Don't pick a picture of you of 10 years and put there, or steal a picture so that the day they meet you, you say you were six foot fat, actually you are five foot nine. That's unacceptable. But you can start any comic, even though it's for hookup, by a lie. Is that already a faux pas? It's, it's, don't lie. Say everything just the way you are. If she pick you, she shoes you, that's good. It's very important. Yeah. So it's not just a hookup site here anymore. It used to be. It used to have a reputation for being a hookup site. It's, it's basically everything. You have to sift and sort through it. You can find a relationship. You can find a hookup. You can find polyamory. You can find yeah. married people looking for a side hustle. Right. You know, it's like you, you yeah. just yeah. have to you have to know what you want. And exactly. I agree that the honesty, men often lie about their height and post yeah. pictures from when they were 20. I don't really yeah. understand. Like yeah. you had long hair, now you're bald. Um, I don't of, really yeah. care that you had hair when you were 20 if you're bald now, like yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like a lying, uh, you go in a store and you look at the merchandise, it's a fake one. Yeah. And you put it there, put it, you put an ad on it and say, oh, here, here's a great thing that no, it's, it's, and I said, it's already a bad way to start any relationship, I agree. lying people immediately don't trust you. Yeah. So what are your final words of advice for anyone who wants to go on their last first date? Be honest, be you. Just be who you are. That's the best policy, no matter what. Don't add extra inches. Don't claim the money you have that you don't. Don't pretend to be rich if you are now, average, you don't have to be rich to be loved. It's important to be honest is the policy to go. Very important. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Guy, for this enlightening conversation. Nice to hear about how they do it in France. I love that French <laughs> men are so much more aware. They're better listeners. They are yeah. much more direct. And they Very don't put important. the gloves on, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, you don't have to. No, and none of us have to. And I think we can all learn from that. Um, tell us how people can find your book and to find you. Well, my, uh, my first book is called uh, A Frenchman Perspective on American Woman, uh, Love, Respect, and Relationship. And the second book is Love Like the French. Um, they are on Barnum Noble and uh, Amazon. Amazon.com. And also I have a website called uh, thefrenchperspective.com. Um, I'm on uh, Facebook, The French Perspective, and uh, Instagram, The French Perspective. <laughs> okay, you're consistent. So we'll have all this in the show notes. Um, thank mm -hmm. you so much for coming on the show today and sharing the French Perspective. Thank you very much. And it's a great honor uh, to be on your show. Thank, Thank you. you. And thanks, everybody, for listening. If you love our show, please rate and review us. You just go to your whatever app you listen to podcasts on, and there's usually a place you can just put your five-star review. It helps us to bring on wonderful guests like Guy Blaze and, and to continue bringing you this excellent content to help you go on your last first date. 